okay, from Delhi. Sai, Sai Kumar, can I call you Sai? Yeah, just call me Sai. I just go uh, thanks. by Sai. Thanks, yeah. thanks, thanks. Okay, we have Meet uh, from York University and we have Nidhi from Hanbur College. Okay, all three doing different things. We learn a lot about what they are doing right now. Okay. And they all started in fall 21 uh, during the COVID time. So you can talk to, we can ask questions regarding employment and all that. They'll actually, they'll tell you exactly what the ground reality in Canada is right now. Uh, but let me just uh, introduce the College Pond Virtual Mentor Symposium, uh, Mentorship Symposium. We're, in the past week, we've already covered Ireland and UK. Uh, and we have today Canada and tomorrow is going to be US. Okay. Uh, so today, what the whole focus of this, uh, this symposium is for the student community at large to ask your questions and identify and uh, try to understand what is Canada like from these people, okay, from our so-called mentors and what you can gather in terms of whatever questions you have. We want to keep this as an open forum and we try to answer all your questions as we go through. We'll start with the initial set of questions ourselves. Okay, and what we'll do is we break down into three different sections. One is talking about Canada in general. The second thing we're going to talk about the university life, and third is, okay, we went there. So what? Now what am I going to get out of it? Okay, so we're going to talk about that as well. So I'm going to first start with each one introducing themselves. So Sai, can you introduce yourself and just give them a background, a brief background, and also why you chose Canada? Yeah, sure. So. I am basically in electrical and computer engineering here. My specialization is embedded system firmware engineering, IoT. Over here, my professor is like a super genius in robotics. So I'm working under him. And the reason I chose Canada, actually it just happened. Honestly, it just happened. I got into quite a few US universities. Canada was supposed to be my backup. But as time went on, I was like, okay, this is better. This is better. Canada is better. So... It ranked up to the second best university. The first was, I didn't get into the best university that I wanted, but I did get into good colleges, but I was like, ah, I'll just choose Canada because life becomes easier. But yeah. That was Great. When you say super genius professor, okay. Yeah. Anything comparable to what you had in India till now? So India, I did not have anyone to guide me in robotics. I had people to guide me in other fields. So this, and over here, the approach of guidance is completely different. It's completely offhand. He'll just be like, do this. And I need to figure everything out from scratch. But I have a few people helping me out. So he has a huge lab and I got an office space in the lab itself. So over there, I have quite a few people that are, he has two PhD students. They help me out. Other master students help me out. Like they're go really good in control systems and I'm bad in that. I'm good in the other part, the firmware engineering part. So I help them out in that. So it's basically like that. He just tells us do this and we need to do it. That's it. Great, great. We'll get to your curriculum a bit later, but meet. Yeah. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Why not? So uh, basically, currently I'm doing a master's of management program here in Shulik School of Business. Uh, which is in York University. Coming to the choice of uh, country, uh, Canada was my second choice, not the first. My first choice was Norway. I applied to a lot of universities in Norway. And personally, I wanted to go to BI Norwegian Business School because my aim was to do a management course in India as well. In India, I gave CAT as well as CT, the MBA exam. And I also cracked them. But I always wanted to go into the top three business schools. But unfortunately, I could not. And uh, compared to India, like India has a lot of competition in terms of getting into a university. After that, it becomes easier in terms of job. But in uh, 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 universities abroad, it's not that difficult to get into an university, but getting a job is a bit difficult. So that's the uh, generic comparison between Indian universities and uh, universities abroad. So yeah, you're... The course is very amazing in terms of learning. The diversity is super duper amazing. You'll get to know a people from all around the countries, all around the globe. And also the weather conditions and your learning graph goes from this to this because 
you not only talk to people who are like minded but who are coming from different background who are from kaizenology who are who have studied like physiology who have studied uh, economics and all the other things which you can imagine of so yeah it's been very good and what are you currently doing me so the people uh, so it's very clear okay so currently i'm studying i'm doing a masters of management program it's a one year okay, program great. apart from apart from that i'm also doing an internship at a marketing firm wow you already That's got an today. internship so soon yeah like it was not uh, uh, compulsory or it was not included in the curriculum but you know if you if you are going abroad you need that experience of the other country so that you can show in your job resume that i have already worked in a company or a country so for that reason i took an internship great 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 okay will yeah. nidhi uh you want to introduce yourself uh yeah so my name is nidhi and i'm currently studying the business analytics course from hamber and uh i'm working as a bi developer with a firm already and why i chose canada is so i had a list of five countries starting with australia uk us canada and there was one more uh yeah i guess just four of these and i just like cancelled out or like the other three based on some other other reason so uk was getting costly and us is the whole lottery system with h1b i didn't want to get into that and australia also has got no other uh support in terms of pr like it's not that easy as it was earlier so i chose canada great great and then we have sneha sneha is actually there's a lot of questions that are going to come up regarding pr and all that so sneha you want to introduce yourself regarding from a perspective of uh, visa and the pr and all that because there are going to be questions coming through right so hi everyone i am sneha from college pond i'm one of the senior counselors here and uh, i have been helping students here with the visa processes and a lot of other things and yes students do come up to us with a lot of questions especially when it comes to canada they have a lot of curiosity when it comes to uh, the pr process how does it actually work when can we actually apply and uh, the the whole the whole uh, the crs uh, thing you know is a little uh, is a little complex for everyone to understand so uh, i'm just here hoping that you know uh, some of you would throw some light on that today as well great great so uh, let's begin let's begin with the first thing okay is uh, the way we broken up is know your destination okay so i want to understand from a one of the things that you guys must have considered is return on investment okay as you were looking at schools okay just want to understand from your perspective uh what when you what was the thought process when it came to return on investment and starting with sai i mean you had choices is why did you what was what is what is the how did you come how do you drill down to canada and especially dalhousie okay so for me the other college that i got into was columbia and that costed like 100000 usc and i'm like no i'm not paying that much that's a bit too much for me and the other college that i like i could have gone to is new york but again i didn't like if i went to new york i'd have second hand regret that i did not go to columbia and the entire process would have been there so i like the third like then i thought i want to come to canada and the fees is cheaper then you get to work here 20 hours part time so i can do that so like my daily expenses i kind of remove them myself because of my part time job as well as like the university which i got in dal it does not accept a lot of uh, ec applicants like there are only two or three people from india which i accepted every year i'm like i get to work with a prof more intimately compared to other universities other universities there are like 200 students 300 students with because of that i chose dal as well as like i had a talk with a few people and to tell you the truth in canada dal was the only place i got in my i applied in eight us universities and two Ca- universities in canada i got into like five us universities and one in canada so i like i chose that why not canada you get a pr faster 
I, like as Nidhi said, I don't want to get into the end two and B process. That's just okay. So, so Sai, now you said that you were you are currently working in a lab, and you have your own desk at the lab and everything. Is that a paid type of activity, or do they pay you, or do they defray some of your cost of the education yeah. there, or how does it work? So the professors, all the professors in my university have a lab. All the senior professors have. So the last term, in the fall term, I got a TA ship for my like one of the subjects, and this term he's given me a project. So I'm getting. Like I'm getting the money out of it. Yeah, as okay. well as I get to work out of campus part time. So, so the question. So, so when yeah. you say you got a TA, okay. Uh, when you say you got you got a TA, uh, question is: Is it easy for people to get TA? Uh, so I don't really know about that. Some people find it really difficult. I got it by luck. I feel, and if I apply now, it. is easy for me to get into but during that time i just i think it came down to circumstances i applied i mailed i emailed uh, my prof i asked him is it possible please can you give me a ta then i met him then he like cool you be my ta you know like cool so that was the process for me some so people was... have applied for 3 like the guy who was with me for the ta he applied for 2 years before that but he got it along with so it just depends on luck i feel Okay, but Sai, the question is: Did uh, this, the the question with respect to TA is? Uh, did you apply once you got there, or did you apply before you got there? Before I got there. So before you went to Canada, you were connected to the professors. After you decided you want to go to Delhi. Yeah. So in our thing, like I'm doing my ma- uh, master. So in our case, we definitely have our entire degree depends on my professor. If he signs it off, that So I get the degree, then only I'll get it. So we have to be in good contact with him as soon as we get it. At Dal, that is the case, and they don't reply to mails a lot. So sometimes you need to mail. I mailed him twice. I got the reply on the third time. Then once I came here, I made it. I took an effort to meet him. So you have to go and meet him. Otherwise, they won't know who you are. Okay. What about the both of you guys, Nidhi and me? Did you guys have a similar experience with respect to? Uh... ta and all that yeah so how it goes in colleges there is no concept of ta in colleges when you are doing a post graduate diploma so the way i'm doing it and i did get admit from dalhousie university for the applied computing program and i chose humber over dalhousie because uh, i get a four months of break in september so i can work full time and this will help me take care of my next second year's fees so this so like i'll be taking less amount of loan from home and then so on and so forth and hence i chose humber over dal and coming to the second point of uh, canada the thing that i like is you can work if you get a job on campus you can work on campus and both out, uh, off campus as well it's not like us that you have to just work on campus so i have friends working on campus and off campus both so uh, like off campus you can just work 20 hours a week but then if you have something on campus then you can take it together so that takes care of your living expenses and few bits and pieces of your fees as well so that's how it is so nidhi can i just can i just clarify something is it 20 yes. hours you can work 20 hours on on campus and 20 hours on off campus so total 40 hours a week Uh, or 20 hours only 20 hours off campus 20 hours off campus that is recorded in your employment records like that is considered with your government when you file your taxes so that goes on your social insurance number and when you are working off campus uh, the hours are not really included in the 20 hours off campus so on campus you can work unlimited that is not counted on your cell and so that as is far actually- as you have got the time to manage you can work as much as you want on campus so what you're telling me is that you can actually cover all your living costs through working yeah you can wow just 20 wow. hours is more than enough for your living expenses but then if you get something on campus then you are more than lucky you you should do it 
And rest depends on how you juggle your other calls and your assignments and everything. I'm going to get to that. First, I want to hear from Meet, <laughs> and then I want to ask you that question. Yeah. Meet, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to jump in because the conversation was really interesting. For me, uh, the degree or the course is pretty heavy. Okay, uh, uh, like I'll be very honest. There are two things I'll cover. First is about the part-time job because I currently am doing a part-time. Like apart from internship, I also do a part-time as a cashier. Okay, at the grocery store because I also want to manage my expenses. But when I see other people and when I see my own schedule, there are a lot of meetings. There are a lot of group assignments because it's a business school. You have to network a lot. You have to meet the professors. You have to meet your colleagues. You have to meet colleagues from different programs as well to make that connection. Because for getting a job here, at least in the business school, I'm not pretty sure about the college or maybe other technical courses. But for a business school, it's very, very important to connect with people and get a job. You cannot apply on LinkedIn and get a job. First point. So for that reason, if you devote twenty hours or maybe more than twenty hours. towards your part time you don't get that extra edge to network with people this was the first uh, drawback now i have realized that so i'll be leaving the part time in about one month but yeah for sure if you do a part time you will definitely cover all your expenses it's more than enough as nidhi said you can cover your expenses maybe it rental grocery you can also enjoy it. you can also save some money to like send it back to your home and coming to the ta part uh it's very competitive here in my university at least because most of the people are canadian or maybe people who have already studied in york university so they already have that edge over the experience for applying the ta they already have served as a ta in their previous years or undergraduate degree so if you have not done it so professors would like by default choose those people who already have the experience of doing a ta job so it was difficult for us who came from international background to get into a ta but it's not impossible it's difficult but it's not impossible you should always be very proactive in applying those jobs yeah but my question is how easy or how difficult i know is it to get this outside job or getting this job on campus because i both, uh, all three of you i'm quite impressed that all three of you we don't get the same success rate when we look at other countries in terms of getting employment while you immediately when you guys actually because you guys went in september 21 and that's quite impressive that you all are uh, have, are employed how easy or difficult is it uh, and did I you just, start before you went there go ahead meet sorry yeah so to be very honest uh, to all the students who are planning to coming to like canada it's not at all easy to get a part time job at least outside campus like off campus job it's not at all difficult you just take your resume you it's hard work not difficult okay you just take a print out of your resume and visit 10 to 15 stores a day you visit or go out to all the stores out there which you wish to work in for two days and definitely i guarantee you will get a call in five, uh, five to seven days because lots of my friends have like done this particular thing they go out they distribute the resume and they get the job but if you are being lazy if you try to keep applying online and you don't show up to the customer store or the grocery store they won't give you the job so coming back to your question it's fairly fairly easy to find a job at any point of time whenever you are in canada at least part time jobs Do you guys both, uh, Nidhi and Sai, are you guys? Do you echo the same message or the uh, same opinion? Yes, I do. I have a supporting example of myself. So the job that I'm currently working is the sixth job. So I have already wow. worked five jobs earlier. So I mean, I worked with one, I left that. I worked with second, I left that. So but then that was all not related to my field. And then now currently, I got a job in my field, so I picked that and I left everything back. So I guess five, six months, five jobs is a fair deal. I mean, you get. I think that's yeah. not good. Let me job. put it this way: that's not good <laughs> having five with this. Well, it's just a part-time no. job. I just need it for my survival, right? <laughs> so if I get something better, and then I just hop on, right? If it is making my life easier in, in terms of location or in terms of work or whatever, then it's a good deal for me at least. And then I got my field job, so I left the other jobs. and yeah i mean i just kept on hopping 
so the hopping means that you get jobs you just have to keep on applying and like meet said you go to the store you put your resume and then it's obviously field job over so how did you get the one how did you get the one of the ba the current job that you're currently doing how did you approach uh, i got it over linkedin so when i arrived here in the month of august i started connecting with the uh, with ctos or cfos or vice presidents of small small companies so like small as in like really small small scale companies like not the big it giants so that's how i started my linkedin connections back in august itself and when i arrived i started applying and telling them that i can work full time in september as i have a break and then i can join again because i have a co-op in my course so that is how i used to pitch them that you currently give me part time and then i can work full time in the break and then the co-op and then after graduation so the vice president like i gave my first interview with the vice president back in september itself and uh he was then he then agreed that we can hire you part time but then he said that it can happen in january so i was just waiting for them and hence i did the hopping of the jobs <laughs> and <laughs> so in january i got a call that we will be interviewing you in feb so the process here is a bit delayed and bit slow in terms of it as compared to india so i gave my second interview in february and then feb and i had my joining date so i am on a contract job with them till the end of august and then let's see what goes ahead great so it was on linkedin and yeah that's it i mean LinkedIn and Indeed is something that we use actively here. Great, Sai. What do you yeah. think? Your friends and all that. I know you're currently working at the PA with a professor, but how easy is it to get a part-time job? So last term I was a TA. This term I did not go for the TA as my prof did not have a course. He had graduate courses which I can't do a TA for. There are PhD students only who can do a TA for that. So last time I was a TA. This time I'm work like. before my project began i was working with i'm working i'm still working as a cashier i do that as a side job so that i get mental peace you just need to go there scan the items like remember some codes and something like that and like uh, and get to meet quite a lot of people so that is also fun i enjoy talking to people like i met quite a few people which are fun to talk to so i do that and i am right like the first for the first time from september to december i was just a ta and i had quite a bit of course and i was trying to establish my name in the lab because there are around 3 to 4 people but, but in order for them to give me the equipment so allow me to use a lot of stuff they need to trust me so i was working quite a lot in the lab and doing the ta and i was a marker so my entire time went in that and then after that th- after that i don't have a ta so I'll like i'll do something or the other so i became a cashier at a lo- around a store that is really close by to me my me- the only reason i applied for that is like i was just looking for jobs and i found that there's something i need to apply and to do remove my rent at least i don't want to ask my parents for money because obviously there's like a strong belief by everyone do not ask parents for money i <laughs> i do not believe in that i'm like i'm going to get money later on so i was I just applied for a cashier job just 300 meters away from my house. So like, cool, I'll do that. And I got it. And then I am continuing that. And then after that, then I got the project. So now I'm doing that simultaneously. Yeah, it's easy I, to get an off-campus I, I job. I have a question for you. Go ahead, Sam. I I do have a question for you, Sai. Yeah. Uh, i'm sure you said that you got your uh, ta job uh, you know uh, as 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 it was just pure good luck for you but uh, yeah. i i think uh, uh, you know a lot of our students are very curious about how to get the ta jobs did you have to convince the professor and tell him that hey, hey, look you know what yeah. there's some uh, uh, you know uh, congruence between you know the thing that i want to do and the research that you are doing so how did you really convince your professor uh, did you did you have to show any kind of a correlation between what you want to do and what he's doing yeah so the ta shop that i did for the course which i did for is microprocessors and i have a fair bit of experience coming into it i came in after grad direct i came in directly after graduation i did not have any experience per se but 
I had a lot of projects. I had quite a bit of grants that were gra- like during my undergrad project from Mumbai University. I'm from Mumbai, Mumbai University, as well as I was doing an internship. So I had a letter of recommendation. So when I applied for the TA ship, I attached all my documents, the letter of recommendation, my resume. Then he had a meeting with me. He like, and then I we just talked about some of his projects. So he first he asked me about my projects, then I asked him about his projects, and we just had a nice conversation. So he's like, I, I'm it's fine. You can just TA for me. I'm like, okay, nice. So that's about it. Beautiful. I would love it. To the professor connect, and that's it. And if okay. he replies to your email, I was lucky to get a reply. Usually they don't. No one replies. Uh, do you guys? Do you guys? Uh, do you guys echo the same thing that professors don't reply generally, and you just have to keep on going after them one after the other, and give them a three yes. day span? Both of you. <laughs> Me just yeah. saying no. Right? No, for for Me us, just uh, no. like the uh, the policy of Canadian professors, like at uh, at least in the university, is that they have to respect their students as well. because if they don't reply to the student the canadian students here or the international students are fond of getting replies from uh, professors they rep- they like mail the professor for every single doubt they have they won't discuss with other students but they will discuss with the professor because we have a concept called as participation marks so for that reason if you participate in the class that's okay but apart from class you need to show the professor are you actually studying are you actually going through the textbook are you actually doing some research uh, a, a background research so for that you have to mail the professor so for example if i mail the professor and he if he or she does not reply me till the next lecture in the next lecture i can tell him that you haven't replied to my mail so it's the duty of the professor here to reply to each and every mail also if you try to mail the university like when students are getting an admit or when they are trying to get an admit you try mailing the universities i'm pretty sure that they will reply to your mail because according like their perspective that we should address each and every doubt of the students whoever is paying the fees because they should be aware of what they are doing okay, okay. so it varies from school to school is what it is Yeah, so no. what trend oh, I have seen is uh, when you ask doubts, you get reply. You get replies, yeah. but when it comes to TA ship, there are a lot of people already, you know, going back to the professor that I want a TA ship. I want a TA ship. So there is where the competition lies, and that's when the professor is actually judging that how serious are you with this uh, TA thing and uh, how much efforts you are putting in. So with the TA yes. thing, the professor is actually put a delay but then with a doubt or any other thing you just get a reply within hours yeah so that's the same case for me in my case also if it's a course and i i mail a professor regarding the course i'll get a reply instantly that's their duty to give me a reply and even the admission process so that's a general secretary of our department who handles it. she always replies to my doubts for administrative process there's no issue but when it comes to actual research when i want to get hired as a the project for example he is my professor he knows me that's the reason some people vouch for me in the lab that's the reason i got it for a ta ship he does not know me so again those kind of issues they take time for other issues which are administrative or regarding lectures they are very quick to reply i had to give that correction about that so that is what okay. it is Yep. There's a there's a question from the audience uh, in terms of do the universities provide any support in securing co-op or jobs? Do they help you get that part-time job that you guys are looking for? Are there job fairs that we have in India, or how is the how is the process different than that in India? This was a question from the audience, so I will meet. You want to take that first? Yeah. So there are two different, uh, three different questions here. First is about the part-time jobs. So. i i think most of the universities have that career development center or maybe their online portal where they post the jobs at least for me or some of my friends who are studying in different universities they have this online portal where they can apply for part time jobs the part time jobs are posted there for a very limited amount of time they have to apply it very quickly it's very slow the process is very slow of getting an on campus job which is been posted there this is in terms of part time jobs 
coming to the job fairs so they don't have job fair concept as such but they have networking event kind of a thing wherein uh, they'll bring in some uh, experienced people from the industry they'll keep a seminar like same as this one where we are talking and students are getting to listen and after that we can connect with those uh, industry experts or maybe different alumni if you can say and connect with them and get to know more about the job market so this is about the job fairs that uh, students are asking about and in terms of securing an co-op so uh, again coming to the job portal they have a lot of opening which are been posted on the job portal in terms of internships my program does not necessarily have a co-op so i don't have a particular uh, idea on the co-op but yes the internship thing uh, internship thing there's a lot of internship that are posted on the career website you just need to apply and if you are lucky and you fl- and you are proactive in applying you applied very soon you will get an interview call if you are lucky okay and what about the in humber is that the same thing yes yeah, so with humber uh, the part time jobs there is a portal for like the on campus jobs there is a portal for that and uh, when it comes to co-ops then the faculty do help us saying that this company uh, has this opportunity and we have a course which will which in which they will help us build our resume or cover letter linkedin profile and everything so we have that course next semester and in the fourth semester when we are about to start applying for the co-ops then the co- program coordinator and the faculties will let us know about the opportunities and then we have to take it ahead from there as i mean i mean we have to apply we have to appear for the interview so there is no help proper help help kind of thing but then they'll just let us know with the openings and opportunities out there yeah okay uh see i guess i you're going to say the same thing yeah so in my in for us i think the my like when you're asking me this question my perspective is the full time jobs after my degree so in my case or in ec my i am more towards the electronics and electrical side my specialization is different so in my case in my department per se there are career fairs available but career fairs there are like many people applying the best possible place for electronics and i may i might get into firmware engineering or robotics so for me is to apply via linkedin or use my connections either i will be if the company which i'm working with right now i'm doing a project for with my professor they want to hire me part time i'll be like all cool great if they don't i'll be applying via linkedin and i'm not that worried about a job because once you have canadian work experience like if you have someone vouching for you then it won't be much of an issue as well as there are jobs available the pay scale is lower if you don't have experience as i don't have experience i have an experience of like a four month internship and like a six month project with my college and then i'll be getting a project over here that will be my canadian work experience so i'm fine with starting off low but as i go through go through the motions i'll be getting more money and if like a factor where you get in the money you get or the job whatever it is in it field there are jobs which are very easily available not very easily the easily available in my university at least like i know quite a few people in mscs like which course that means they got into they get co-ops pretty easily yeah in my okay, case great. my department is different yeah okay now while you guys all have one of the questions that a lot of students have asked is how do you juggle all three i mean juggle looking for a full time job okay in your case meet okay uh course work okay part time job okay at times how do you and especially in the day because uh, sai you also be a two year program i assume okay yep. how do you juggle all three and how difficult is the course work that allows you to actually uh manage a part time job and do you get enough time to yourself Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Nidhi, no problem. I'll come after you. 
Uh, well, uh, just a heads up. So me, Sai, and Meet are from the same undergrad university. Sai is <laughs> one year junior to me, and me and Meet are from the same batch. <laughs> oh, coincidence. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember talking to Sai over LinkedIn a few months back, and Meet is from my batch. So yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, coming back to your question, so what I did is when I came here, I took Tiffin service initially for a month or two. So I don't have cooking on my hand. I just have to work and study. And once I got in the feel of the part-time work, uh, that's when I took up cooking. And other than that, uh, like for your part-time, you have to show your availabilities. So Saturdays and Sundays, you don't have school, you don't have lectures. So Saturday and Sundays, you can work and you can cook. And when it comes to Monday to Friday, you just have your college and you just have to do your assignments. So that is how I do it. I used to do it. And now I'm working Monday to Friday and Saturday, Sunday is off for me. So do you get sufficient time to do everything? Uh, well, yeah. But then you have to leave few bits and pieces like you cannot go out or you cannot enjoy each and every week. But then once a month, twice a month is okay. So you have to leave out the enjoyment bit for a while by, while you are studying. But then, yeah, you can manage it. So I guess I'm studying six subjects in the semester. So it's like six subjects have quizzes, assignments, group projects. So every subject has a quiz, every subject has assignments, every subject has group projects. So with that, you have the midterms, the final terms, and whatnot. <laughs> That's a lot. And how many hours of class instruction for the six subjects? A week? Uh, a week, three hours. So we have each all class. The each, yeah, for each subject. So you're taking yes. 18 hours of class quiz lectures, plus yeah. assignments, plus, plus a 20 hour job, <laughs> plus yes. another job on campus. Oh, no, I'm not working on campus. I'm just okay, working plus 20 hours. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, but then me. you can manage. Uh-huh, go ahead. It's easy. Okay, me, do you agree with that? Mm, I'm just getting overwhelmed. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we all will get overwhelmed when we like, get into the process. Because as I told, doing an internship, doing a part-time, as well as the coursework. So as Nidhi said, there are quizzes, there are assignments. Also, apart from that, for us, there are uh, case competitions, which we, which if you are inclined to what you have to participate in or students club, you have to participate in. Okay. So it's very difficult. So one point, you surely will be able to submit everything that is due. There's no doubt in that. Second point is the efficiency or the learning that you get from that. So if you don't do a part-time or if you are not involved in an internship, you'll be able to learn a lot. That for sure. You'll do. You'll be able to do an external research. You'll be able to talk with different people. How are they approaching the assignment or the business case? But if you do a part-time, if you do an internship, you won't be able to devote that much time to the assignment. You won't actually learn 100% out of it. I'm not telling you won't be able to learn anything, but the amount of learning that you expected while coming here won't be that much. So currently I am also juggling with the part-time and the internship, but it's the necessity to like be an all-rounder and manage your time. So one, so one of the most important factor while coming abroad is how do you manage your time? Because all the other things are very easy. There's no harm in doing an internship. There's no harm in getting a part-time job. Uh, like you'll be able to complete your assignment. You'll get good grades as well. Like there's an Indian mentality. If I do not get 85 to 90 percentile, I'm not do- doing good in my course. But here it's not the case. They they follow a concept called as bell curve. So they try to give you grades wherein the class average is maintained. So coming back to the point, yes, it's very overwhelming when you try to do more stuff than necessary. But eventually. I uh, I would like to suggest that don't try hard to get a part-time job if you're not comfortable doing it. If your coursework is light, then only do the part-time. Otherwise, eventually, if you get a job, you'll cover all the expenses that you already invested in. So try to focus more on the coursework. Try, try to learn rather than 
investing your time in all the other stuff if money is not very important for you yeah so how it goes is in the initial phase it's you are worried that you you actually end up leaving on stuff so when i started working part time and it was like i was into the first semester very first one second month studying so i used to bunk off my shifts i used to take an off that hey i've got assignments to do and i cannot work so that's when uh like that's when i was not in good terms with the part time like with the manager at work but then i knew that my priority is my assignment and not my part time work so that's when i left that job because uh i was not actually able to manage it so once i got the hang of the assignments then i started doing the assignments after the lectures immediately so once the lecture is done i take an hours time and i just finish up the assignment because the topics are really fresh in your mind and that's how i do it right now and i guess that takes care of everything and then i started then i looked for another job and then i started working again so that's why the hopping <laughs> I I guess I guess Nidhi has learned, and both all seems like all three have been on the art of time management in Canada. So you want to comment so, yeah. on that? <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, these guys are like doing a lot. I don't do this. <laughs> I honestly don't. I don't like these guys are superhuman people. For me, what I basically do when I came in, I had decided not to do a part time because I was like, first I'm going to get the feel of it. this my first time i'm leaving home i like i was living with my parents my entire life my mom used to cook for me i had no idea like i learned how to cook but cooking on your own without any support is different living on your own without any support a support system is different and you can rely on friends over here but i don't like to rely on people so initially my thing was like i'll get through the coursework i'll get through the ta because my financially i was secured because i had gotten the ta So I'll get through the TA, then I'll go through it, motion a day by day, a step by step. So for me right now, also what I mainly do is I just go sit sit in the lab, work for some time. We work like I need eight hours of sleep. I've kept that a uh, thing that no matter what happens for me, I am taking eight hours of sleep. I'll tell my prof that I'm not coming to the lab. I don't care. I'm taking eight hours of sleep. That is very important for me because I don't want to get sick and there's no one for me to take care of me over here. So. I get that eight hours of sleep, and for coursework also, I have to complete seven courses in my entire like master's degree. So I did two courses last term. This term I was like last term was too overwhelming, so I took only one course. Even though I'm what courses I'm taking is kind of outside my field, so I we'll talk about the courses later on. I feel, but then I took in the part time. Then like I am. not create a time management but i try to make sure that i cook at home over year especially in halifax that you know allow the the tiffin services are super costly they like 400 dollars i'm like i'm not spending 400 dollars i'll cook on my own so i'm cooking on my own along with a friend of mine we do have ready to eat stuff so that is a life saver for me at least yeah and then i is your I is need, ready to eat better than your cooking No, no, no. So <laughs> cooking, I have gotten fairly good at it. Like six months of practice has made me good enough. I feel that, and yeah. But my mom would disagree. But yeah, I feel that it's good enough for me. I'm going to record and, this and send okay, it to your mom. Side. I'm sorry. I'm going to record this and send it to your mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she's just happy that I'm cooking. Honestly, she's like. I was worried. What are you going to do? Because I don't want to eat outside food. I'm a vegetarian, so that becomes an issue for me. I don't want to go outside. I don't have a lot of options, so I'll just better cook at home. And then, mainly for me, my time goes in the lab courses. I have taken a very intensive course this time, even though so because it's only one course. I took a really intensive course, completely off my field. and so that takes in a lot of time i put in a lot of time in reading the course and i work on my project and the lab and i have nothing else the part time and friends so one difference time. one difference here i would point out between university and colleges in universities you can select how many courses you want to do per semester maybe one or two or three 
So with Humber, I cannot select the number of subjects. I have six, six subjects. I have to take all of them. I have to do all of them. So which which is a prelude, exact prelude to the academic uh, structure, which is yeah, what my yeah. next topic yeah. would be. So colleges, is, yeah. So colleges are ahead, strict. Really. Well, yeah. So there is a fixed curriculum in semester one. You have these six subjects. You have to take all of them. You have to complete all of them. You cannot choose to drop out or something. So there's no going back to there. And you I mean, do you think? Present. Do you have flexibility in your curriculum, or do you have more like Nidhi because you take a management course? Yeah. So for me, I seen some students who are domestic students. Okay. they try to juggle between their courses but apart from that uh, like for juggling between your courses you have to put up an application and get back to the admission team but in a normal scenario uh, you cannot choose your own courses there's an option for choosing your own courses just for the last semester where there are three to four selective subjects like same in india where in engineering like i did engineering so in the last semester i was given a choice uh where you have to select between two or three courses so that's the only thing apart from that the other courses are like pretty much self explanatory you have to take them if the university says you have five courses you have to take them there's no choice between them and you cannot juggle or maybe uh decrease your workload in one semester and then pass it over to the next semester like at least for my course that's not happening okay But uh, in your case, Sai, you've got complete flexibility in terms of courses. Yeah, yeah. How many courses do you need to graduate, Sai? I need only seven courses to graduate, but those seven courses are really, really intensive. Like it takes a lot out of you. It, just reading the textbook takes a lot out of you because in India there's something tech max over here. You don't have tech max. You need to read the entire entire thing, and they are huge. The textbooks are like, and even I used to read textbooks back in India as well. and most of the textbooks is like 30 30% useful information 70% information that the same thing that's repeated again and again and again and again so i've gotten used to reading papers and this because we'll need i need to review quite a few papers also for the lab so i put that is as my studying or my review time as well as well as learn quite a few new things over here and but in my case as soon as i came here what my prof said sir you know this don't take these courses take different courses i'm like okay so i am going to uh, embryo systems with the firmware part he told me i am take but he told me to take some signal processing courses and some uh, biomedical courses so i'm doing that so something completely new it takes a lot out of me because again just new thing for me and i need to build up the basics then do it and in my classes the biomedical classes Uh, there are only two engineers. Like there's a MD doctor over there. There are clinical ultrasound person. Then there are there are two chiropractors. Like completely different backgrounds. So the course, if it's engineering heavy, it's easy. But some are even a bit bio heavy, and the professors are like pretty chill. So it's not much of a problem. But and yes, we have flexibility. Last time I took two. This time I'm taking one. Next time I'll be taking two. and in our case our professors tell us what courses you all can do you all can't do they have to sign it off he has my degree in his hands so he'll decide like, sir sir you know it's strange what strange is you're taking courses that outside or are you taking what your professors are saying encourage you to take courses that outside the focus area that you're planning to pursue why would no, that no, be no. the case so that he's not doing it to like if i tell him no i want to take these courses he like okay you can take these courses but he told me why don't you go out experience new things so even in embedded systems biomedical is a huge field he told you right i agree with you why aren't you looking into that in embedded systems robotics is a huge field why aren't you doing that why are you con- constraining yourself why don't you go out explore if you and then you are more options will open so right now the doctor that i'm meeting they are giving me a different perspective in my field itself so he saying to in, get me that perspective per se got it got it as well as even the signal processing part he like you need to know signal processing because it's very important in the future right 
it's very very important and there are many application that you need it in the future why don't you study it why are you like avoiding subjects he's encouraging me he's not telling me to go and take it he's telling me this is a good he just guides me he's like if you want to do this you can do this i'm like okay this makes sense i'll listen to him okay okay so the question is given that all this how important are grades in this whole thing and how how much learning is in class versus what you learn on uh, this by yourself because uh, the feeling that i'm getting is that a lot is learned is a lot learned in class or learned by yourself by doing the project work and how important are the grades in canada especially from a recruitment perspective especially from a perspective that uh, down the line when you look for a full time job so for me grades are important because i feel like i need to repay my parents by they are giving me the money for the fee so i'm like at least this is my job or my duty to at least give them that, the grades so i'm getting good grades that's my plan like i need good grades because that's how i'm showing my parents that i'm studying they are not send their son to do full time pass out there so and the second aspect where you're saying that the grades for a full time job you don't need you need about 3.7 gpa i think that'll be good like a above b minus or b b or b minus above that you'll be good that's not a 3.7 that's a 3. that's a 2.7 or 3 gpa i yeah 3.7 would be 3.7 is an a, a minus gpa oh a minus yeah, yeah. 3.7 would be an a minus gpa minus. Yeah. that's what that's what sai is getting so he's saying that's what you need <laughs> i'm not getting <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. for, go ahead meet yeah so for me same as say that you have to prove to your parents because uh, as i already told that there's a conception in india that you should get good grades and that's the proof that you are studying well so if you are doing great you will get good grades but here from a, a management or maybe a recruitment perspective i'll surely tell you that they don't they won't see your grade uh, if if you want to get a job you need to have that skill that's it they in the interview process like few of my friends have started applying for the job and me as well so whenever i sit in an interview never have i ever heard a question uh, how much grade did you get but they will always ask you what did you do in this particular activity or what did you do in this particular project so grades are just uh, a criteria Uh, as i said you just need to get above b minus or maybe b after that you put in your resume even if you don't mention your grade in your resume nobody will ask you even if you mention your grade nobody is going to ask you grade doesn't matter to the recruitment team here it's just the skill or the experience that you bring on to the table nadi do you concur with that Uh, yes i do agree with this so at humber we have a percentage system so anything above 80 is good and when i gave my interview for my current work so they never asked me as on what grade did you get for this subject or for this subject or for this semester overall but then they did make a point to ask me as on if this is if in this subject what did you do what topics were did you learn and like based on my current work i had the subject in semester 1 so in this subject what did you study what topics were covered and what can you tell me from that course what were your learnings what do you remember so it's not uh, dependent on your grades but supposing you and i we both are applying for the same post and we have the same skill set and we both gave a good interview that's when the grades come into picture that to just a shortlisting criteria that you have two candidates everything is same then it boils down to grades so that's when the grade will grade might come into picture other than that there's no such importance for grades so so what i'm hearing from you is that it's more important to understand and see what you've done as opposed to how well they want to understand actual application and your uh, your ability to comprehend what you're doing as opposed correct, to yeah, as opposed to just performing well correct yeah so skill set matters so there is no concept of rote learning as such no yeah you need to pass definitely for sure 
and uh, for each exam it's a 50% 60% criteria so getting a 50 and 60% is like <laughs> we used to have back 32 in india so getting a 50 and 60 <laughs> is like you passing already <laughs> so you need to pass for sure but then there's nothing like you get a 90 or 92 or 93 that's not required something about like this what what seems to what 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 i'm inferring from you is that they're not very loose by giving grades or they're pretty uh, conservative in giving grades across across the board is that true or are they uh, is there so a graduation where to everyone done 3.8 3.9 across the board is that the case in canada as well or canada is more uh, conservative when professors give grades out to students and they so, follow the bell curve like neet suggested so in my case i feel it greatly depends on the professor some professors are re- they really are like really chill they'll give out an a plus to everyone no matter who does it and some courses some professors are like only a few students get an a plus a few students get an a that's how it is like and generally in my program in my class there are only 7 to 8 students so generally everyone gets an a or an a plus because you need to put in work you can't be the only person who's not putting in work when there is everyone around you who are really smart and who does not put in work so usually it's pretty easy to get a good grade if you just put in the work that's it in my case at least yeah a or a plus you need a a plus a minus sa you probably send a pluses to all your parents left right and center <laughs> uh, not you really. sa you, no. you probably put a plus a a to your parents to show them look this is what i'm doing me you were laughing or you smiling is that true like uh, when he said that it's pretty easy to get grades i was just self penalizing why am i not getting them <laughs> like for example like to be very honest a lot of people are putting a lot of efforts in doing all the assignments but then to we are not able to figure out like in the first semester we were not able to figure out the why are we getting only b plus or maybe a minus and then we started talking to international uh, uh, the domestic students here then we got to know that there is a, con- a concept called as bell curve then we started mailing the professors why are we getting these uh, grades and uh, what needs to be improved so then the professors and the second semester started discussing the bell curve concepts in the class itself they'll tell that even if you do great there will be only few students who will be getting a plus or maybe a but majority of the students will lie between the range from b to a minus because that's where the average is and they have to maintain it and for sure our policy is not to fail anyone so nobody will get a c minus unless and until you have hurted a professor or maybe done something very wrong so yeah they will maintain the bell curve and getting grades such as a or maybe a plus not on an individual subject but overall semester grade of a or maybe a plus is very difficult that's what my take is Uh, but what's the difference between a plus and a minus did did they discuss that like what's the differentiating factor differentiating factor like they have the assignment uh, rubric so in the rubric they directly convey what all things are required for getting an a plus what all things are required for getting an a minus or maybe b c all those stuff so somewhere or the other you might lose on a particular topic or a particular concept and that is the grading perspective like they want the exact thing which is asked if not they'll grade you a minus they are not very strict on grading but they want what is asked for well it's completely the opposite for my case they are pretty strict when it comes to grading uh, like it's humber is pretty strict with grading system so people do fail people do get less what? grades yes people do fail and when it comes to the concept of plagiarism or someone who has copied and everything they are asked to drop the subjects they are given zero in the whole subject you have to take the subject next semester 
So that's the case with Humber. Not scaring you, but then this is the harsh and the real truth. So the Any plagiarism thingy, Yeah, the Go plagiarism ahead. thing is a very big thing, even in Dal. Like they are very, very strict about all it. All over but, Canada. All over Canada. All over the world other than India. Yeah, other than India. That's true. <laughs> no, so like plagiarism is very strict, but again, adding to it in our course per se, as there are not a lot of students, they just give A plus A to everyone. And you just need to, in our case, if our code works or if our thing works, you get an A plus. That's all. Nothing else. Oh yeah. Th- that kind of an input and output, right? The thing yep. you design and you get an output, it's proven. For us, it's a ba- uh, business case, right? So whatever solution we provide, it's never the optimum solution according to a business. So we never get A, a plus <laughs> because a business always wants more. <laughs> uh, okay. So I want to, I, I think, uh, so uh, we just, we talked about academic, we talked about the grades and everything, but I want to talk about the batch side and diverse, batch size and diversity of your, cl- your class in terms of uh, what is the diversity of your class in terms of international, domestic, uh, in terms of uh, the size of your classes, individual classes that you have. Is it a small class? I know Sai also is pretty, pretty small, okay? But in, uh, in the case of Nadi and Meet, are the classes small? Is there student-faculty ratio? Mean that there is a lot of personal attention given to the students how is that across the board? Because you guys are doing three different things in three different universities. So it gives a good cross section of how Canada works. Okay. So uh, answering your diversity question. So if you come to Canada, so Canada is a country where you find a lot of Indians. Any country you go for abroad studies, you'll find a lot of Indians. So for sure, there'll be around 30 to 40% Indians in your uh, course or maybe in your class but at the same time when i look at my university there's a huge diversity there are a lot of canadians there are a lot of people from china iran russia or maybe korea so you get to know a lot of different cultures and diversities or if you call it ethnicity you get to the so the diversity in terms of country is very large in terms of their undergrad is humongous because nobody here has done technical courses apart from Indian. All the other people who are coming from different country, only one or two may have come from a technical background. All the other people are from different background, maybe sociology, political science, economics, or physiology, brain science, neuroscience, all sort of that thing. So diversity in terms of knowledge or in terms of undergrad is humongous. You get to know a lot of different people. And uh, what was the second question again? The cover from uh, the class size. The class size. Oh, the class size. Yeah, the class size. So uh, for us, each course has been divided into four sections. So each section happens on different days. Okay. And uh, in a class, I will say they don't allow uh, more than twenty-five to thirty students in a class. So four sections, so approximately one twenty students per course. That's the number that I like to give you. Okay, so in 30, so basically when you say that, that means your class, your class is no more than 30 students. Yeah, one class is no more than 30 students. Okay, there is a student faculty ratio. That means that there is personal attention and you have the ability. It's not like a, it's not like a lecture hall type of atmosphere. Mm, No, it's not like a lecture hall kind of atmosphere because as I told, participation, uh, uh, like contributes to over 30 to 40 percent right so professors do yeah. want to give you marks on participation they will try to make you answer stuff if you're not willing or if you have a language barrier like for example chinese people have that language barrier so professors have a concept called a discussion board wherein you go like as soon as you get out of your class you just post whatever you felt about the class that is one part but in terms of the personal attention thing, the professor wants you to contribute. They want you to learn. They want you to get something out of the course because they themselves will feel good. That's what I think. They themselves would be able to contribute to the students. Are the professors approachable? Very much. Anytime. 
Okay. Okay, Nidhi, did you echo the similar feelings? Or yeah, so what's I the guess, diversity in the class at Humber? Yeah, so with Humber, I am in the IGS campus, that is the International Graduate School campus. So there are no domestic students in my campus. And there are other two campuses of Humber. So Humber has a total of three or four campuses, I guess. So I'm in the international campus, so there are no domestic students. So it's like mostly Indians. 70 to 80 percent are Indians. One is from Vietnam, a uh, few are Chinese. That's pretty much it. And it's a batch of 50. So it used to be 55, I guess. And then few failed and few dropped off and everything. So we are boiled down to 50 right now. And uh, the faculties do know each and everyone by their names. So even if the lecture is going on virtually, the faculty does know your name. So when you connect with the faculty for the group project, the faculty has a good idea about you, your individuality or you as a person, how active are you? So like Meet said, there are participation marks and everything. So uh, this participation concept came into picture because of the virtual lectures, like the online lectures. So the faculty tries to know more and more about you. And so basically the faculty is noting everything about you. Even if you are just joining the lecture. So last week what happened is I appeared for a quiz and my marks were less than what I was supposed to get. Like I knew my answers were correct. And in the software, my answers were not marked. So I mailed to the professor that I did mark and I don't see my markings anymore due to which I get, got a less grade. So the faculty did ask me that, were you present in the previous lecture? I, don't, I didn't see your name. And uh, that's where he was not sure. So he asked me that uh, you were not in the lecture. So are you sure that you marked the answers correctly and everything? So I did end up telling that, yes, I did attend the lecture and maybe it was some issue with my login system. So it ended up to be, it was like, it. it it was an issue with my system, but uh, this means that the faculty is keeping a track of, even if it's an online lecture, who is joining, who is not joining, who is giving answers actively, who is not participating. So yeah, that's how it is. So you cannot just sit passively and do nothing and just okay. get grades. That's not possible. Yeah, as I said, my class size is low and for diversity per se, in my Sorry, department, yours is pretty diverse too because you told me the Indians. Yeah, very diverse. And my department is also pretty diverse. So I have like Canadian guys. Okay. And then like Indian, like I don't know a lot of Indians because not a lot of Indians actually get into the course, which is not that great for me because then again, I don't have a lot of Indians to like gab about with. And then there are quite a lot of Chinese people, Iranian, Russians, almost everyone. Everyone's there. Okay. And how big is your class size? Sorry? Yeah, so Hello? in my, yeah, so the total amount of people enrolled in the program are 70 people are in the masters, 70 people are there for the PhD. But in this case, also not everyone takes your class. So the last term, the classes I took was first class had six people, second class had nine, 12 people, I feel. Yeah, 12, 12 people, I believe. This time I had eight, eight people. Next term, I'll be taking a directed study. So it'll be only me and the professor and a master's student, one more master's student. So like three of us, that's it. And one other course, which again will be five or six people. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, can you just answer the chat? There's a question regarding what schools you got into in the chat. I can't see okay. the chat question. It's on the chat. Uh, it's on the right hand side. No, I'm on, I've joined okay, let me, let me give you... Oh, oh sorry, I'll, I'll sorry. read out yeah. I'll read out the question for you, Sai. Yeah. Uh, which universities, uh, which U.S. universities did Sai apply for EC before zeroing in on the Dalhousie universities? Okay, so I applied to 10 universities. I was like, I'm going to throw everything at it wherever I get in. Cool. One was University of Arizona. I got in over there. Then was New York University. I got in over there. Columbia University. I got in over there. 
then watch as the polytechnic i got in over there then ncsu i received i recently received an email two days back that i got in ncsu i'm like no use right now right and dar so these are the university that i got into <laughs> four university that i got rejected by so one was ryerson tech in canada okay. toronto itself i got rejected by over there then i got rejected by uh, carnegie mellon then i got rejected by which other university is uh, colorado boulder and one more university i got rejected by is ut austin i wanted to get into ut austin that's my top, that was my top choice but sadly that didn't happen Okay, okay, fine. All right, Neet, there was a question regarding did you submit a GRE or GMAT score? Mm, did you submit a GRE score or a GMAT score? So for Shulik School of Business, the one place where I'm uh, learning, and or especially in Canada, GRE or GMAT is not required. It's not required. But if you go to any other country, let's say for example US or maybe Norway, where I applied, you have to give your GRE or GMAT score. Yeah. For me, I did not. So, did you submit it to Canada for, uh, or no? For me, it... go ahead. Uh, come again. Did you submit it or not? Yeah. Yeah. So, for Canada, I did not because my main aim was to go to Norway and Canada. So, initially, I haven't given GRE, and in Canada, there's a concept uh, that says that if you're done a four-year degree, a bachelor degree, and if that's an engineering. they'll just see your subject you have to uh, fill out an application form wherein you put in all the subjects that you read so they'll uh, kind of judge you if you are able uh, or if you are capable in terms of qualitative or quantitative analysis if you are they directly like uh, they directly allow you to trust pass this first, uh, this particular uh, requirement the gre requirement uh, and i think i don't actually recollect but the gre requirement was cancelled off only for my course but for other courses i think uh, some of the guys had to submit gre or gmat like for say example of uh, mba these guys had to give gre or maybe gmat that's what i think i'm not pretty sure about it okay okay uh, i want to so there's guys... two more topics that i would like to discuss so you got sam No, no, I was just saying that Sai has one more uh, question. What was your uh, score in uh, undergrad? So, are you talking about the free online exam? Because I had one online exam, and that was online exam. So, that's going to be different. So, free online exam, it was seven point nine two after my online exam. That my last term was online. So, I got I raised it up to an eight point one two. My CGPA. So you did phenomenal if that's what you had. I think I, I think at the end of the day, I think your essays worked. Yeah, is the way worked. I look at it. Yeah, my essays worked. Okay, all right, all right. So uh, coming coming back to coming back to a question that I want to ask you guys. I want to move to two different topics, and uh, then I'll open it up to the audience. Uh, Uh, one topic that i want to discuss to talk to you about is uh, what are the differences between india and canada okay uh the second thing i want to talk about is uh so that's the first topic just to briefly your two minute or one minute uh, tidbit on living in canada and then we will talk about uh, full time jobs and and the put the, the pr process who wants to start Sure, I'll start if you want. So, and the weather also. Yeah. So for me, I hate the weather. I honestly don't like the weather here. But it's fine. I am sitting in a heated lab. All my amenities are included in the rent. Inside the house and inside a place or inside the bus, it's great. But outside, it depends. In Halifax, per se, there's a time duration that. It's going to snow, and it snows sometimes. It does not snow sometimes. There's rain. It's like a combination of everything. I'm like, so weather. I'm not the biggest fan of, but it's something I can compromise on. Why not? I'm getting good money by my professor. He's like, I'm getting really good guidance. Like, he's guiding me on what to do, what not to do. So for me, that trade-off is good enough. 
and living in canada is honestly like live again it's more like you live in india you live in canada you study there i was work like studying there in india as much as i'm studying here so it's the same the only difference is you don't have your support system like your parents are not there you do make friends but they're not going to be as good as friends as that you had in india like your friends in india were like for a really long time and then you were close it's like a process you get used to it it just initially it was bad for me i felt sad that i don't have my support system over here like my friends my family and everything but you get used to it why not right like you just get used to it so are your friends only so indians friends. you've made friends beyond yeah the, so the my media. friend group like core friend group is indians then i have other non indian friends i have one from oman i have like a few friends from who are canadians themselves one from us like a few chinese friends and like yeah cool so because my course itself is diverse could maybe you learn some chinese food how to make chinese food also and i am a vegetarian so maybe you I'll learn like to so maybe chinese vegetarian chinese i'm good at chinese that you teach them the indian chinese approach yeah i teach them the indian chinese approach they are saying like you just put a lot of spices that's it you don't cook properly I'm like you do you i'm going to eat my food <laughs> uh. okay meet go ahead yeah so uh, talking about the weather as uh, sai told and none of the canadians is well like the people who are living here since the past 20 years they don't like the winters here because it's very harsh the temperatures would go from minus 15 minus 20 like in toronto it goes to minus 20 to not beyond that but the weather is very unpredictable it will be snowing all day it will be snow outside you have to like get on layers two layers three layers and get out for working so we, we were pretty fortunate because it was the setup of in virtual environment for all the classes but now as the covid restrictions has gone down for my internship too i have to visit the office every wednesday and for my course work i have to go to the university building like i live on campus and the university building is just 10 minutes walking from my place but then too i have to put on like three layers and go out put in that effort so yeah winters are very harsh in terms of weather but as soon as the winter ends so it is predicted that winter will be ending on 15th of april so after that it's the most beautiful place you'll be able to experience so canada has a lot of natural beauty so summers and springs and fall these three seasons all the people living here live to the fullest they'll go out hiking camping visiting different places so in terms of weather i'll suggest that winters are harsh be prepared for them and be prepared for enjoying the summers for sure okay and uh... how was your assimilation to the canadian culture the canadian culture uh, like i was pretty fortunate because when i came here like before coming to here i we had a whatsapp group like most of the people might have had like i got an admin from shulak uh, those people created a whatsapp group and we already connected like two months prior to coming here so there were few indians whom you connect directly uh, so in terms of core friendship or maybe your support system your parents are not here for sure but i was fortunate to find three or four friends who i can uh, like look up to whenever i am down or emotionally struggling or maybe i want to discuss something i can look up to them so it's not very difficult in terms of friendship here in canada because a lot of people are coming here alone so they also are looking for some support system so you you won't be feeling alone if you are if you have that factor of uh, communicating with people and in terms of friends apart from uh, indian friends then i do have few of the canadian friends as well and they are very outgoing uh, we have the conception that they are superior than us or they won't uh, they won't try to indulge much but they are more curious to know about us more than us like they'll ask us question what did you do in your undergrad how did you do that do you have a girlfriend uh, what do you do where do you live what do you eat and all those questions so they try to form that bond also chinese people uh, when you uh, i am also a vegetarian 
so i cannot uh, eat the cuisine of uh, chinese people because most of the time they eat non vegetarian food but yes for sure i i like a lot of canadian cuisine as well as the russian cuisine uh, whatever they make in a vegetarian food so people are very welcoming here so you won't feel alone or you won't feel that i don't have anyone here nadi do you share the same opinion uh well yes even i do share the same opinion so when it comes to weather the winter is pretty harsh but then you get to use you get used to to the whole layering up system like you wear two layers three layers and everything so you get used to it people do look forward to summer so as soon as february is ending people will be like summer is coming summer is coming it's like a whole huge vibe around here and even i'm waiting like it's going to be my first summer so i'm waiting to see how huge it is because everyone is everyone just says that summer is here summer is here i mean it's like a festival kind of thing that's what i feel and um yeah people are friendly you can look up to a few friends and like that's not much of an issue because all of us are in the same boat here without parents and struggling and working and juggling between work and studying and everything so it's not that big of a task you can manage it's not that a problem did you feel homesick nidhi nidhi did uh, you feel yes, homesick i did yes i did so i was planning to come back home but then i had a few friends so they helped me and now i'm okay Okay, me. Did you feel homesick? No, uh, no. As I told that, uh, I personally didn't feel homesick because I found that three to four friends who were very close, who lived like next door, and we cooked food together. We are not living in the same room, but we do our own stuff. We go to the library. We go downtown to enjoy on weekends, or maybe we do all the assignments together. but when i see other people there are few people who do feel homesick because they don't have the support system same as nidhi and sai told they they feel like they should have someone to listen to or uh, like uh, pour down all their emotions to but they don't find it here so yeah some people do feel homesick for me the okay great the last okay it's pr and full time job sorry Yeah, I think my internet is having some issues. Hello? For me, the homesickness part was more like I was missing my parents and missing my mom. Like someone's being there for you. Like before, during undergrad, I just did not need to do anything in the house. I did not have to cook. I did not have to clean. I just need to go there, have a bath, do my normal stuff, go back, study, and then come back and like live life. Or why I need to do everything? So that part made me feel homesick and appreciate home. I think my video. last thing that we're going to discuss, okay, is with respect to, yeah, uh, last question, the last topic we want to discuss is full-time jobs and uh, the PR process. Okay, one of the reasons why you guys thought about going to Canada is obviously the PR process, the ability to get the PR, the ability to get residency in Canada, okay, and ultimately get a uh, first get a full-time job and then apply for PR. So can you just explain me to what approaching that at this point in time as you have a one year curriculum and you are in the second semester yeah sure yeah sure so for me it was just a one year curriculum and in canada there's a conception where if you work if you study for one year you'll get a one year work permit if you study for two years you'll get a three year work permit so in total that comes to five years of you being here in canada and you can like comparatively or maybe easily file for the pr but in terms of my case i just have one year course okay so i have uh, like heard this from a lot of alumni that even if you are doing a one year course and when you try to apply for the work permit after your course is completed officially it should be one year of work permit but only 8 to 10 people get one year of work permit all the other people usually get 1.5 to 2 years or in some exceptional cases two and a half years of work permit so it's not dependent or maybe fixed that you'll only get one year of work permit 
if you are fortunate enough you will also get 2 years of work permit and if you get a 2 years of work permit then like 100% of your uh, stress is relieved why because after your course is completed uh, in terms of my case i have a, i have done a 4 years degree bachelor degree back in india i have 2 years of work ex okay so i have uh, a good point uh, after that i have done a master's degree one year master's fourth year and after that if i get a one year work experience here in canada i am fully eligible to apply for my pr on the same day i complete one year of my work ex i just need to get a job in noc a noc b noc c category so basically there are three categories of job which you need to be in it might be managerial technical and third is some other category so if you get a job in any of these category as soon as you complete one year of work ex you are eligible in my case you are eligible to apply for the pr so it's pretty much sorted i'm just hoping i can get an work permit beyond one year if it's one year of work permit i'll i'll be dead on the timeline i'll have to rush here and there so yeah this is pretty much the case and what percent of people get full time jobs meet uh what percentage of people do do get, get full time jobs. jobs yeah 100 per- 100% 100% and the salary like eventually, is eventually 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 you will get a full time job because the job opportunities or the job market in canada is huge because as compared to india india has a lot of startups but second biggest country in terms of startups is us in canada so canada has a lot of uh, a huge startup community as well they are building on it so you will eventually find a job the time frame is different like some people might be able to figure out their job scenario within one month some people might uh, find a job in two months but everyone would get a job and in terms of salary for example if you are doing a masters of management program same as me so the entry level job that you would get would pay you around let's say for example 55 to 80 this might be the range people might get different salaries so 55 to 80k would be the salary that i would uh, that i found out according to what i talk with alumni or researching on linkedin and google so it's pretty good in terms of return on investment it's pretty good yeah okay and uh, the how long do you get to find a job you have one year so within that one year any time you get the job is fine or do they give you a pre- period like the us that you have 60 days after you graduate to find a job okay so for example you get a one year of a study permit okay so i'll tell you uh, i'll tell you my scenario so you will be able to jot down the timeline very easily so my course started in september so it, the logically the study permit should be till this september september 2022 but it's not they usually give a study permit of the year end So everyone, I think, here in Canada who are international students get a study permit until December 2022. Okay, if it's a one-year course, and my course ends on August, so I get those three months extra period to find the job. But if you are an international student, you have that burden on your mind that you have to get a job. So before your course ends, so similar to India, you try to find a job. If you are able to find a job. that's good you can start whenever the commencement date is if you are not able to find a job you have that 3 month period of time where you can find a job and people do find a job in those 3 months that's for sure okay okay great okay and uh, sai do you share the same thing or do you have a different opinion So for jobs, at least for tech, at least for computer science guys, it's easy. I don't think it's going to be that tough because there are quite a. And what salary available. side for computer science? Salary, it depends. If you have work ex, you get quite a bit. You get eighty to ninety thousand. Like I. Okay. Yeah, but. if you do like 70 to 90 definitely in the range even though it's a huge range it depends on your field so i know a friend in data science for his coop itself he's getting around 45 50k for four months he's getting 45 50k that's like really good so depends on your work ex depends on your field 
data science ml there's quite a lot of jobs not a lot of jobs like quite a lot of money and for maybe developers is a bit lower or might be the same and for my field my field also it greatly comes down to experience so experience will like if you have more experience your salary will also increase so i i'll be finishing next year or this year december or next year april i am looking around 60 to 70 70 like 60 to 70 around that much i am not expecting a lot because i don't have a w- lot of work ex okay so okay. depends on your work ex a lot uh what, what started the... so... sorry go ahead are these startups or are these uh, this uh, big tech so i am if you look at big tech is going to be the same startups also almost going to be the same there's not going to be much of a difference maybe a difference of 10k but getting into a big tech company right of the bat is going to be a bit hard for me again the experience comes into play even though i'll have canadian exp- work experience i'll have the internship i'll have other things under my belt but i don't have i didn't not have a full time job in india experience like meet and nidhi did right so that might be a bit of a problem for me but i'll get a job i'll worry about it when i have to cross that bridge i'm not thinking about it so much right now yeah okay nidhi you humble college nidhi you there Okay, Sneha, you had a question. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Uh, I was trying to ask uh, both Sai and me, uh, since they're looking for jobs, like what is the transition process from the uh, study visa to the work visa, the PGWP? So is it something that the company uh, will give you a letter that, hey, you're now working with us and that's how you transition or or do you transition automatically because your college gives you that uh, you know leave a uh, uh, school leaving certificate or something like that how is that process uh, actually how does that work i yeah, have no so clue I, about it yeah i i'll take you. this one yeah so i'll take this one so basically it's not the first it's the second one that it's pretty much automatic so once you complete your study permit so let's say for example i complete my study permit on december this year so automatically i am eligible to file for my work work permit so that's the case here so coming back to suraj question suraj's question where he asked that what is the time frame you need to have to find a job so even if you don't find a job this december till your study permit ends It, there's no problem you can file for the work permit you can get a work permit and in the meanwhile you can still look for job there were some people who could not find a job in the first one or two months because they were very lazy i'm not talking that the job market was not good but they were very lazy or they were not improving their skills but they were able to find jobs in four to five months and this was the period where they have already filed for their work permit so even if you file the work permit and you don't have a job that's not a problem but that would be uh, that would be the problem when you file for the pr so you cannot file for the pr if you haven't completed one year of your work ex so in terms of time management you have to be pretty accurate when does your work permit start when does your job start yeah exactly that was my next question because a lot of students who go on a one year program like you they are very pretty skeptical about you know how am i going to apply for a pr if i don't complete my one year of work ex and uh, for them uh, if they don't get a job immediately that's uh, that's a problem so i also just wanted to ask you how does the pgwp uh, like uh, end so for example let's take a scenario uh, you graduate and uh, you know you find a job say by september or october and uh, you know that okay my study permit is there till december so the moment you find a job then you will transition to your pgwp right and then you have one year from there so there you are saved right but you will apply for the pr after your one year is over so how will you stay back in canada till your pr kick, you know kicks in place okay 
so uh, i'll i'll go step by step okay so in august my course is completed so unless my i get my transcripts in my hand like let's say for example 15 days after my course is completed or one month after my course is completed so until i get my transcript i cannot work at any firm officially i just have to work for 20 hours a week same as the students work here international students work here, okay as soon as i land up with the transcript on the same day i can start my job 40 hours and on the same day i should file my uh, work permit why so because if i file my work permit my working hours would be calculated for my pr point if you are not on work permit even if if, if you are not on work permit you cannot work for 40 hours for sure you can just work for 20 hours so if you are working 40 hours and you file your work permit you get that point to get added on the pr okay so i get a work permit let's say from october 2022 to october 2023 okay so i'll work for one year and as soon as i complete my job for one year i'll directly apply for my pr and there's a rule that if you have already applied for a pr nobody can kick you out of canada there's a concept called as bridging work permit so if you are in the process of pr or if you are in the pool of pr so you can keep applying the work permit unless you are been rejected and in canada you are never rejected you are always in the pool of pr nobody will tell you that you won't be getting a pr if just the point system so if the cutting criteria is around 470 let's say for example this is just a random number so if you apply for the pr when you are on 380 they won't reject you they'll just keep it keep you on the large pool of other people as and when you keep adding your points your work permit uh, your work experience points or any other points the learning fringe adds your point and you go up and you meet the criteria of 470 they will take uh, you out of the pool and give you the pr so this is the basic uh, system how it works in canada right got it and can you travel back to india in the interim while you are in the pool or you cannot uh, while in the pool of pr or while i am in the study permit or work permit uh, while you, while you are in the pool say you let's say you have uh, 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 completed uh, you are in october 23 now you have just one month like you have just completed your one year and you have applied for your pr now you are on that bridging work permit so in that time uh, can you travel to india mm, or you no, supposed I'm not to pretty, wait till you... i'm not pretty sure about this particular right. because uh, yes you yeah. can but there is a concept of trv so you have to apply for the trv and then you can travel on that so that's don't take chances is what i say yeah it's yeah obviously you don't take chances but then you can do it and there's a lot of added work so that's how it is great great uh this is a question that's come up okay a, a, is me can you shed some light on the shulik mmai program mmai program uh who who sever has asked this can you like personally collect with me on linkedin because i don't have uh, much idea on this to be very honest but i have few friends who might help you so currently i won't be answerable to the depth which you want me to perfect okay is there let me ask you a question 1 to 10 i i the student community that's watching this on youtube and as well as other places if there's any other questions uh, you're more than welcome to ask right now but in the meantime i have one quick question one ending parting question uh is 1 to 10 canada your experience 10 being the best one being uh, not so good at all uh, something that was below uh would you oh, how would you rate it let's go quickly meet Uh, it would be 8.5 yeah i'll be a, i'll be a bit more critical i'm going around 7 7.5 7 yeah nidhi a oh, 9 from me but like not a 10 just because of the winter so a 9 Okay that's great and uh, uh, 
in the meanwhile meet also there's one more question do you have any idea about the business analytics program in shulik uh <laughs> one more program so my uh, like the program that i am learning is pretty much hectic right so i don't have any idea of any other program as of now because i my self is juggling between uh yeah you are in mute maybe they can just connect with you on linkedin and you could you know, yeah you yeah for sure so if, you, if could... you have doubt yeah if you have doubt in uh, or uh, inquiries about any other program you can just directly connect me on linkedin if i have few connections i can direct you to them perfect perfect uh any other questions uh there's a question there's a question that comes up how was your ex- experience with the application process for shulik like? yeah me too. so yeah so the experience is pretty amazing because first you have to file the application there are like you guys might be knowing if you are planning to study abroad there are few rounds which in which you have to apply round 1 round 2 round 3 i'll tell you to apply as soon as possible like around november in the first round itself okay so if you apply in the first round itself i personally applied in the second round uh asneha can you just mute uh whatever uh, disturbance is coming i am on mute uh, actually nidhi could you just mute yourself for some time yeah, okay yeah. yeah thank you sorry sorry for that yeah so my experience with the application was pretty good because there is a step by step process you have to mail to the admission team that where do i stand there's no hesitancy in asking what is the update on my profile okay first thing second thing uh, uh, specifically about the shulik they you will have to put up an application with an sop all the things that are required by all the university after that if you are sh- shortlisted you will be called upon for a video interview so the video interview with uh, will be with the program coordinator and she'll ask you some basic questions very basic questions about yourself what do you do what are your hobbies you can term them as behavioral questions uh, she'll ask you and after a particular timeline they have a pool from which they pick up the applicants so you'll have to wait for around 15 days to 3 months and if you get an admit then your application process is move ahead so this question was just with the application process or the things after application process continue just continue yeah so uh, once you get an admission so you will be super happy for sure because shulik is one of the top business schools in canada you will be super happy but after that you'll have to pay a a, a small amount of deposit fees to secure or to secure your seat here it would be around 3 Three thousand to four thousand Canadian dollars. You have to uh, like deposit it through wire transfer. After that, uh, you'll have to do a lot of paperwork. College Pond will help you with all of that uh, in terms of visa filing, in terms of uh, your loan if you're taking, or in terms of finances that you'll be able to do. Uh, there's another question: Is there a deadline in which you have to accept the admit or lose that? Yeah, for every university, you have a deadline. For every course, you have a deadline. Like they'll give you a particular date before that you have to like pay your fees or accept your offer and that date is very flexible like say for example you get an admit today you'll get one month or approximately 20 days to deposit your fee so that's pretty good time to uh, take a decision so for me i got an admit from waterloo as well so that was one of the good universities here in canada i got an admit from trent university university of toronto no i did not get it from there so yeah the decision phase would be easy the application phase would be the easy but the most difficult part is the patience part like processes is been happening at the back end but in the front you have to be very very patient you don't lose your calm or don't uh, think that nothing is in coming i'll stay in india itself don't do this thing okay there are two more questions uh there are three more questions uh that i'm going to ask you the first question uh, to sai is what is the scope of robotics in canada so for robotics uh like how can you put it there's ro- scope for robotics everywhere in the world 
there's great things that are done in india there are great things that are done in the us there are great things that are done in canada canada the thing is just taking off right now and in my case i've been connected with the right people or like basically my professor is connected with the right people and i through him i'm connected with the right people so it just comes down to that is mainly okay. like there are skills and jobs everywhere robotics is just popping off everywhere i feel okay great uh nidhi there's a question during studying and working per work per working permit during study work can we return back to india for a month or so um yes you can okay uh there is another question regarding will we have another session with canadian mentors the answer is yes uh but this session is definitely available on youtube so you can definitely take a look at that as well um any parting comments that you guys want to give just one more question can we change our college once you get there so you mm-hmm. can transfer your credit but then the course should be the same or the subject should be in line and or uh, the other college should be approving the credits from the first one and if not then you will have to restart and forget the first like program that you completed or half of the program that you completed like it's a lot of work if you change and uh meet did you got graduation work permit no uh, come again i am not able to listen you correctly how much period did you get on your uh, post graduate work permit like pgwp how much have you received nidhi is not graduated yet yeah yeah so we get the work permit once we are graduated so we have to apply for the work permit post graduation so we don't know the duration yet yeah exactly we we, we can't uh, predict it from now once we apply and once we get then only we'll be able to judge how uh, like see yeah. what the actual duration yeah but then the minimum like my course is 20 months so i can get a work permit from 20 months to 3 years somewhere in between it's oh, probably oh, so going to be 3 years yeah it's go- mm-hmm. probably going to be 3 years but then uh like people say it's from the duration of your course to 3 years oh okay so, so for me it's a one year course right you officially one year work permit but unofficially you don't get one year you get more than that okay one last question one last question uh uh nidhi this uh actually two questions one is for nidhi nidhi can you just take a look at the question uh on the chat but yeah, sure. uh, a question that i want to ask uh, meet is uh, if you get if you choose one university you get a better admit can you go to the better university can you switch the college once you come here in canada and before you come to canada no before can i want to answer that yeah i mean uh, you can certainly but you will if you it depends on where you are in the visa process you'll certainly have to pay the visa fees again you can just uh, change the dli number on your account once you land in canada i mean students have done that but uh, apart from that i think meet will be uh, better able to answer how how to do it once you land there in case if you want to you know you get a better admit later yeah if you if you get a better admit later Uh, like in most of the cases student don't wish to switch their uh, colleges or maybe even the courses because it's a big process you are in canada it's a big process to do all the paperwork and everything so if you have the patience just wait for the other admit to come if you're confident enough rather than just getting an admit in one and then switching on to the another okay guys i want any la- parting comments Do you want to give the student community? Mm, I I just say that be patient. If you are in the application process, be patient. You will get through for sure. There's not a big deal. 
and uh, at times it feels very difficult to leave your home country and come here all together to cook your own food and do your own chores but eventually with time you'll get better and you'll feel better because outside of india you get that feel of individuality you'll do things that you love you'll you'll be able to concentrate on what you actually wanted to do so don't fear of going outside and and, and any point of time in your career if you want to go back to india you can there's no big deal but you have to take the experience of going out and experiencing how the people or the job market or the businesses or how the other country operates and a bigger picture and uh, speaking of patience sai uh, what do you, you say about thank you so much meet uh, but since meet was speaking about patience sai what would you say about your patience level when your canada student visa was going on <laughs> a lot of students are worried about that i specifically remember you that's why yeah um, for me the process was like again they decided like five days back that you need to submit the entire thing before 15th of march or something i'm like give me some more time so i had to uh, like again i had to arrange the entire funds then i had to finish the application really fast i had a lot of work like my parents were also like what is this this is not how it's done but it's fine you get you say and according to me you just not do not worry about anything you'll just if you go through the motions everything will get settled you just need to put in the work just try harder i'm pretty sure you or anyone can always try harder so that's what for me is just put in that extra one minute of studying or the extra one minute of like putting in the answering the paper or something like that or their essays i put a lot of time for my essays so yeah Nindi, your last parting comments. Nindi, you there? Uh, yeah, I'm there. So, uh, actually, I was replying to one of the questions in the chat. Uh, so, patience is a must, and hard work is a must. And other than that, uh, learning time management will take care of everything. perfect perfect i definitely want to thank you guys for being there on a saturday morning i know it is 9 o'clock in the morning that i got you guys up and early okay but thank you very much the feedback has been very positive of what comments and what feedback that you provided to the student community and uh, and we look forward to the student community we look forward to seeing you on the us uh, symposium tomorrow uh and guys thank you very much good luck with everything if you need anything we all there for you yep thank you for um, sure thank you for having us have a nice day thank you bye bye good morning to meet then uh, nidhi bye <laughs> yeah good morning bro no problem bye take care everyone